Hello guys, good day to all. Welcome back to again one of the most amazing super duper cool section in Learners Note. Learners Note is an online solution to encourage better way of education among our students. Anyway, I am Renuga, your biology teacher. Today I am going to take you one of the most important and also the very 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 amazing topic in the plus two syllabus that is DNA replication. So DNA replication. So here first we start from world, our world. How wonder is our world? Diverse form of living organisms. It may be plants, animals, fungi, algae and also different types of microorganisms. How fun, wonder is it? So one important thing is that all types of living organisms are formed of cell. Yeah, cell is the fundamental structural and also the functional unit of life. All living organisms are formed of cell. And we know that the cells will have an outermost covering. We already studied the structure of cell. Cells will have an outermost covering. That covering is known as plasma membrane or cell membrane. And inside that covering, they will have a cytoplasm, a fluid filled region that is known as the cytoplasm. So inside the cells, it will have a cytoplasm. And we know that in the case of cell, inside the cytoplasm, different cellular organelles is present, such as mitochondria, chloroplast, Golgi body, endoplasmic reticulum. So, different types of cellular organelles are present inside that cytoplasm. And also, in the center of that cell, they will have a nucleus. But there is some difference between the plant cell and animal cell. In the case of plant cell, the nucleus is situated in the peripheral region because in the central region they will have a large vacuum okay in the case of plant cell the nucleus is situated in the peripheral region because in the central region they will have a large vacuum but in the case of animal cell the nucleus is located in the center of that cell and also inside the nucleus we can see different thread like structure that is known as chromatid that thread like structure is known as chromatid and during cell division we know that the a uh, living organism will grow based on the division. The cells will undergo continuous division which help for the growth of the plant and also the animal and also the all types of living organism. So during cell division, the chromatid will be condensed together to form chromosome. Here we can see this is a chromosome. The chromatid will be condensed together to form chromosome. And actually a small part of this chromosome is known as DNA. The small part of chromosome is known as DNA. So it's very important the DNA. Here comes, here we start the replication. What is the DNA? So let's we look what is DNA. DNA is a major store of genetic information. Here we can see this is a DNA. DNA is a major store of genetic information. And also it is a basis of inheritance. What is meant by inheritance? Yeah. Inheritance is the transfer of characters from one generation to the next generation. That is inheritance. We know that our most of our characters are similar to our parents, isn't it? How it actually happened? During sexual reproduction, the, we know that the sperm and also the egg will fuse together to form zygote. So, the sperm will carry half the chromosome from the father and also the egg will carry half the chromosome from the mother. We know that in the case of human beings, a single cell, inside the cell we know that the nucleus is present. Inside the nucleus, in the case of human cell, we have 46 number of chromosome, isn't it? We have 46 number of chromosome, that means 23 pairs of chromosomes are present inside the nucleus. And during reproduction, the half of the chromosome will be formed or go through the zygote that means 23 chromosome will be get to the zygote and also the through sperm and also we know that the egg also carry the 23 number of chromosome and that egg and sperm fuse together to form a zygote so the zygote will get 46 number of chromosome that is in the case of sexual reproduction in the case of human beings and also in the case of all types of living organism but here comes another term that is cellular reproduction. What is cellular reproduction? Yeah, cellular reproduction means, here we can see, cellular reproduction means we already say that 
plant and also the animals and also the old living organisms will be developed through or grow through cell division. That is actually the cellular replicate, cellular reproduction. So, a single cell will divide to form a two equal cell. That is the cellular reproduction. So, this, during cellular reproduction, the parental cells will produce two doctor cells and these two doctor cells are similar. That means the two doctor cells have the chromosome same as that of the parental chromosome. So, if the parental cells have 46 number of chromosome, the two doctor cells also have 46 number of chromosome. How is it possible? We know that parental cells only have 46 number of chromosome. Then how can this 46, how can the parental cells divide that chromosome into two doctor cells? And also the same number of chromosome is present in the doctor cell. How is it possible? Here comes the importance of DNA replication. So before cellular reproduction, the parental cell want to duplicate or make an exact copy of its DNA. We know that in the case of human cell, we have only 46 number of chromosome within a single cell. So when they undergo cellular reproduction, this 46 number chromosome must be duplicate. That is the production of exact copy of DNA. So, total 46 plus 46, that means 92 number of chromosome must be produced by the parental cell before the cellular reproduction. That process of production of exact copy of DNA is known as DNA replication. Here comes the our topic that is DNA replication. So let's we look. Let's we look what is DNA replication. Okay. So before I moving forward, I just introduce the structure of DNA. We already familiar with the structure of DNA. Widely accepted model of DNA is actually the double helical structure. That is Watson and Crick model of double helical structure. This is the accepted model of DNA. According to the model. The DNA will have two polypeptide chain. Here we can see the DNA is actually a double helical structure. Here we can see the double helical structure. And that double helical structure is formed of two polypeptide chain. One polypeptide is this and next one is this. So the DNA is formed of two polypeptide chain. And that is known as the backbone of DNA. That polypeptide chain is known as the backbone of DNA. And also that when we look that backbone, we can see both the strand or the both the polypeptide chain are in opposite direction. That is one is from 3 dash to 5 dash direction and other strand is just opposite that is 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Okay, so here the two backbone strand are in opposite direction and also we can see that two backbone will be connected together by four types of nitrogen bases. Two backbones are connected together by four types of nitrogen bases. Adenine which is represented by A, thymine which is represented by T, guanine that means G and also the cytosine that means C. These are the major types of nitrogen bases. So the backbone will be connected together by nitrogen, nitrogen bases. And in that we can see adenine always pair with the thymine, isn't it? Here, adenine always pair with the thymine through double bond. It is actually the hydrogen bond. And also, guanine always pair with the cytosine through triple bond. It's always complementary. That means, adenine always pair with the thymine and also guanine always pair with the cytosine. That bonding is actually the hydrogen bond. And also, we know that this is a backbone of DNA. And that backbone is formed of phosphate and also the sugar. That means the backbone will be formed of sugar and also phosphate. Here sugar and the, this is the next sugar that both sugars are connected by a phosphate. Okay. So the phosphate will form a bond with sugar. It is actually the uh, peptide bond. Okay. So here the phosphate, two sugar molecules will be connected together by phosphate. So it is actually the dipeptide. So this is the backbone of DNA. So I hope you get the general idea about the structure of DNA. So let's we move on to the actual process that is DNA replication. Okay. 
let's we move on to the actual process that this dna replication we already say that dna replication is a process of making an exact copy of dna okay that is a dna replication so a reaction in which the doctor dna are synthesized using the parental dna as a template so here we can see this is a parental dna this dna want to replicate that means from this parental dna an exact copy of dna must be produced that process is replication so before the production of an doctor strand the parental strand must unwind for the parental strand first unwind we know that parental strands are connected together by nitrogen bases and that will connect together by hydrogen bond so we want to break that hydrogen bond okay first we want to break that hydrogen bond between the parental strand and after breaking that parental strand each strand will act as a template for the production of new doctor strand okay each strand will act as a template for the production of two doctor strand we know that the doctor strand will be produced based on the nitrogen bases present in the parental strand if the if here we have the adenine that always pair with thymine and also if it have guanine that always pair with the cytosine so the doctor strand is complementary to the parental strand and the parental strand act as a template for the production of new doctor strand so here this half of the parental strand will be formed a doctor cell doctor dna and also the next half of the parental strand will form another doctor dna and it can from this we can clear that half of the parental strand is conserved in each doctor dna this half strand is conserved in this doctor dna and also this half strand is conserved in this doctor dna isn't it half of the parental strand is conserved in each doctor dna here comes the another important term that is such type of replication is known as a semi conservative mode of replication so here half of the parallel dna molecule is conserved in each new doctor hel each new double helix and it is paired with a newly synthesized complementary strand such types of dna replication is known as semi conservative sorry such types of dna replication is known as semi conservative mode of replication here we can see that semi conservative mode of replication this is a parallel strand here we can see the parental strand and this is a newly formed strand and this is a next parental strand and this is a newly formed strand so the half will be conserved in this doctor strand and other half will be conserved in this doctor strand so half of the parental strand is conserved in each replication that is semi conservative mode of replication so i hope you understood the semi conservative mode of replication next how actually that dna replication will occur here comes importance in enzymes let's we look at that and that dna replications will start from a single point that point of or that starting point is known as origin of replication sorry that starting point is known as origin of replication and also we know that in the case of prokaryotic organism they will have a single dna so it's not a complex dna it will have a single dna so in the case of eukaryotes they will have only one starting point that means only one origin of replication is present but in the case of eukaryote we know that human being is also eukaryote so in the case of eukaryotes its dna or its chromosome is actually complicated process or complex so it will have more than one starting point that means more than one origin of replication so let's we look how that replication will occur in the eukaryotic organism there is some difference between the eukaryotic and prokaryotic replication let's we look the replication just an overall idea about the replication okay so replication we already say that the replication will start in a single point that is known as origin of replication let's we look how this happen this is the double helical structure of dna and here the replication will be start on a point that is called ori that is origin of replication that starting point of replication is known as 
ORI that is origin of replication. And first we know that uh, we want to separate the parental strand by breaking the hydrogen bond. Here comes another important enzyme that is helicase. One of the most important enzyme that is helicase. Helicase will broken the hydrogen bond between the nitrogen bases in the parental strand. We know that parental strands are connected together by nitrogen bases. That is adenine always pair with the thymine, guanine always pair with the cytosine. That connection is actually the hydrogen bond. So first we want to break that hydrogen bond. It is done by the enzyme helicase. Helicase will broken down that hydrogen bond. Then how, what will happen? We can see broken part of DNA that broken part of DNA. So actually the helicase will unwind the DNA in both direction. Here the helicase will unwind the DNA in both direction. So here we can we will get a Y-shaped replication fork. Here we can see actually here we can see actually this is a Y shape isn't it here we can see that after the unwinding process we can see a Y shape here and also here also a Y shape is here isn't it here also a Y shape that Y shaped replication for so the DNA replication will proceed in two direction hope you understood DNA replication will proceed in two direction and two Y-shaped replication fork will be formed. Two Y-shaped replication will be formed, replication fork will be formed and the DNA replication will be proceed in two direction. So that is the replication fork or Y-shaped replication fork. So next we look how these replications will happen. We already say that two Y-shaped replication fork will be formed. Here comes the first fork. This is a one Y-shaped replication fork. And we already say that the replication will be moving or proceed in two direction. Here we can see the one direction only. Okay. So this is a Y-shaped replication fork. And we already studied that DNA is formed of two polypeptide backbone. One is 3 dash to 5 dash direction and other one is 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Okay, the two strand are in opposite direction. And also the most important things that the newly formed that means actually the polypeptide new products new peptide will be formed with the help of an another enzyme that is DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Okay, what is the enzyme? DNA dependent DNA dependent DNA polymerase. But one thing important that the DNA dependent DNA polymerase can add polynucleotide only in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Okay. The DNA dependent DNA polymerase can add nucleotides or means make a new bond or new chain only in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So here, so here we can see that newly formed strand in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Here, the newly formed strand will be in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. And also here also, it is 5 dash to 3 dash direction. But something different is here, isn't it? Here we can see a long strand, but here we can see a different fragments. Why is it so? Why is it so? One is a long strand and other one is different fragments. This is because only we say that DNA dependent DNA polymerase can produce new strand only in 5 dash to direction, 3 dash direction. We know that helicase will unwind the DNA that much. This much DNA will be unwind by helicase. So here it's actually the 5 dash and this is a 3 dash, isn't it? This next strand is 5 dash and this is a 3 dash. So According to this strand, according to this parental strand, they can produce new strand only in 5 dash to 3 dash. So, here the production of new strand will start from the inner part, not from the end. Here, the production of new strand will start from the inner part because 
they can produce new strand only in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So, here the production will be formed in this much. Then again the helices will unbind that DNA. Then next strand will be formed here. And again the helices will unwind and next strand will be formed in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So, so here we can see one is the long strand of ductor DNA will be formed and another one is that different fragments of DNA will be formed. And this long strand of DNA is known as the leading strand because there is no lagging here. It's known as the leading strand because it is a continuous strand in the 5 dash to 3 dash direction. And it is formed in the parallel strand of 3 dash to 5 dash. Okay. The parallel strand 3 dash to 5 dash produce a 5 dash to 3 dash continuous strand. That strand is known as leading strand. And in the case of next parallel strand, we know that it is 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So, it can produce only different fragments. So, that fragment are known as the Okazaki fragments and such types of doctor DNA is known as the, that strand is known as the lagging strand. The different fragment is known as the Okazaki fragments and that particular strand is known as the lagging strand. So, this is also very important. This is a lagging, leading strand and this is a lagging strand. Lagging strand in the sense, we can say different fragments. Here actually the DNA replication will be lagged. Because of that reason, it is known as the lagging strand. So, that is the DNA replication in the Y-shaped fork. Next, we move on to how that DNA replication, how that new strands will be formed actually. Different, we already say that different enzyme will take place for this action. What are that different enzyme? First, we discuss only the one enzyme that is helicase. Helicase will unwind the parallel strand. So, here the new strand will be formed that is the starting of DNA replication is take place with the help of an enzyme that is called primase. What is that enzyme? Primase. Here we can see that primer. This is a primase enzyme. First, the primase enzyme will produce a short fragment of RNA that is known as the RNA primer. The primase will produce a short fragment of RNA that is known as RNA primer. And next here comes another important enzyme that is DNA dependent DNA polymerase. The DNA dependent DNA polymerase bind with the primer. Here we can see this is a DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Then this DNA dependent DNA polymerase bind with the prime RNA primer then start adding of new nucleotides. Okay. The DNA dependent DNA polymerase bind with the RNA primer then proceed the replication that means then proceed the adding of new nucleotides. Here why this RNA primer is here? It's because the DNA dependent DNA polymerase cannot add new nucleotide in a vacuum space. They can only add new nucleotides with the help of another one that is the RNA primer. Actually the RNA primer will help the DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Otherwise, the DNA dependent DNA polymerase cannot add new nucleotides. So, the DNA dependent DNA polymerase bind with RNA primer and add new nucleotide one by one. Here add new nucleotide. It is in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. Okay. It is in 5 dash to 3 dash direction. That is about the leading strand. Next we look what will happen in the lagging strand. We already say that the helices will unwind the DNA. So, first primers will be bind here, okay, primers will be bind here because it is a 5 dash to 3 dash direction and this one is a 3 dash to 5 dash direction. So, here the newly formed strand will be 5 dash to 3 dash, okay. But in this case, here it is the newly formed strand will be 3 dash to 5 dash. So, the new production, the production of new strand always occur from 5 dash to 3 dash direction. So, actually the primer will be bind here. Then the DNA dependent DNA polymerase will be bind with this primer and start proceeding the replication in this direction 5 dash to 3 dash direction. And also form another fragment in 5 dash to 3 dash. 
okay different fragments will be formed here that fragment is known as okasaki fragment and this strand is known as lagging strand so the production of new strand is occur here then we know that it is actually a different fragments so we want to join that fragment here comes the another important enzyme that is here comes another important enzyme that is dna ligase dna ligase will connect the okasaki fragments together but we know that in between that okasaki okasaki fragment there is an rna primer because that replication will start with the help of an rna primer so a rna primer is present here in between this okasaki fragment this is a one okasaki fragment and this is another here we can see this is the okasaki fragment so in between the okasaki fragment here we can see the rna primer so before joining that okasaki fragment we want to remove that primer isn't it it's actually an rna strand so we want to remove that primer that is done by the enzyme exonuclease Ex exonuclease will cut or remove that rna primer and then the dna ligase will join that okasaki fragments together to form me lag leading strand the lagging strand will be converted into leading strand in the sense it will be become a continuous strand okay so here the replication like this manner the replication will be proceed in both direction i hope you understood so that is the replication replication is a process of production of no copy that is exact copy of dna that is the replication it is usually take place inside the cell that is inside the nucleus that is inside the dna and the starting point of replication is known as ORI that is origin of replication and first we want to unwind that parental DNA by using an enzyme called helicase helicase first unwind that parental DNA and then the primer will be primer will be connected with the phi dash end of the parental DNA and then next enzyme that is DNA dependent DNA polymerase will bind with an rna primer to form a new strand like that manner the leading strand also the lagging strand will be formed then the lagging strand will be joined together by the enzyme dna helicase after product from the parental strand new doctor strand will be formed and this two doctor in this two doctor strand we can see that half of the parental strand will be conserved that type of or that mode of replication is known as semi conservative mode of replication so that's about the replication i hope you understood all anyway dear students i hope you have a fair understanding of the topic that we discussed in this video we have plenty of such amazing videos in our site so please keep watching and please logging as at www.learnersnot.com anyway i am renuga your biology teacher signing off let's catch up through learners not online classes bye bye